Warrior, I am so honored that we have Tammy Tony Butler returning to the Warriors and joining us today to spread healing, to spread light, to spread empowerment. Um, Tammy always provides us with a very healthy dose of that. And today is also International Women's Day and the month of March is also Women's History Month. So the theme this year for International Women's Day is invest in women, accelerate progress. So I can't think of anybody better than sharing Tammy Tony Butler with you and her ministry with you. And um, just a couple of things about Tammy. But I want Tammy, I always like to say Tammy should share her own story. She is a child sex uh, trafficking survivor, co-founder of Nurses United Against Human Trafficking, advisory council member for Lynn's Warriors, right here. And she is also the founder of Reflective Spaces Ministry. So we're going to get into that today. The website, everyone, is reflectivespacesministry.com. Tammy puts out a, a daily inspirational, daily devotion. Devotional, I think you call it. Is that correct, Tammy? Da daily, I call it inspirational, but I think you call it a devotional or something like that. <laughs> and see, I'm laughing already. You make me laugh. You're infectious, Tammy. And and also, there's so many questions I have for you. Um, you put out a wonderful newsletter with updates, but you're about healing and peace. So. With that uh, being said, the mission of Reflective Spaces, your ministry, is really to provide reflective spaces for transformational healing and total restoration in faith in a faith-filled environment for survivors of human trafficking, sexual violence, domestic violence, and childhood adversity to thrive. Tammy, I could go on and on, but I got to let you talk. Welcome, Tammy Tony Butler, to the Warriors. Oh well, thank you so much uh, for having me and. Anyone that knows me knows that everything I am is because of my faith. Um, Christ set me free of all the aftermath of childhood trauma, the shame, the guilt, the fear, the regret, the self-loathing, the addictions to cope uh, with those feelings, to try mm -hmm. to lift that weight, that burden of trauma and living in survival mode and trauma responses uh, off and he lifted it off of me and gave me a completely uh, new birth. And so I like to spread hope and truth and love. The greatest of all things is love. And I think that's what's missing in our society today is loving thy brother, loving thy neighbor, and just spreading love and peace and joy, uh, meeting individuals where they are along their healing uh, continuum and, and showing them that they are worthy of of love worthy of healing. And it's actually their right to, they're already healed according to uh, scripture. And uh, that's what we have to focus on the truth of God's promises and his word. Mm, powerful, Tammy, powerful. Um, let me ask you something before we, we dig in as, as everybody's saying these days, how do, and answer this any way you see fit. And I know you will, but um, you talk about this on a daily basis and the trauma how are you though, exactly, you know, talking about all of this, um, the word trigger is used a lot, but how do you, how do you do it on a daily basis? Well, I only do it tethered to the hem of Christ's garment, but my journey has been uh, a long one. I'd say about seven years of really trying to be restored, uh, to, uh, before, uh, uh, my uh, innocence uh, was stolen as a child because it was probably about five, six. I, I don't know exactly the age it started, uh, but uh, I was basically made a sex slave and a commodity to be able to get the rent paid and for my mom to have a, a, a place to, to live. And, and she didn't work, but I don't fault my mom. She had her own trauma. And so she parented me in survival mode. And after even losing my dad uh, to Vietnam and then losing him to an early divorce and then alcoholism and then sadly by suicide. And we buried him on Father's Day when I was 15. Mm -hmm. You know, those things you carry with you and they can define you. But I refuse and I refuse to not be whole. I refuse to not be restored. A factory reset to when I was you know, we were uh, before we were formed in the womb, God knew our purpose and what we were called to do and to be. And I am that powerful woman that he knew I was going to be. 
and the devil tried to stop me. And, and, you know, life, we, we live in an evil fallen world and I just tether into him and he gives me strength. I put on that body armor that it says in Ephesians in the word of God. And I just refuse not to walk in peace and joy. And there is no fear in perfect love. So I just don't let those things enter into my world. Hmm. I love that, Tammy. I'm always gushing over you, but rightful, I say rightfully so. You know, I say amen to everything you're saying. Now, you make, you make me happy, even though we're talking about, you know, all of these things. Like, this is what is needed. Um, I want to throw in also, you're talking about love and all that. I also find that people do not listen today. Nobody's really listening. Very few really, you know, we have these pat answers to different things. I, I was even thinking when we say to somebody, oh, hi, how are you today? Do we really listen to that response? Do we really want to know? I know you do and I do, but I was thinking about other people. We have to get back to those kinds of little neighborly type things, just sort of taking a little bit extra interest in our neighbors, in our community. I, You were so brave. I mean, you formed reflective spaces ministry the ranch can we call it the ranch you can call it the ranch because i i like to call it like the healing ranch tell us about that uh why you decided to actually do that so bold such a warrior move go to florida florida open this up get people back on their feet tell us tell us a little bit about the ranch well it's almost like psalm 23 you know come alive we have green pastures and still waters and it's a place of restoration and healing. Mm -hmm. It's a place to actively listen. And that was a great point that you brought up, that we we do not take the time to actively listen without implicit bias or judgment. We tend to form our own expectations of individuals and we put expectations on them. And we can't do that because everybody's journey is different mm -hmm. and their healing journey and how long it takes them to get to a level that they can attain, not the level that we set for them. It's the one that they have the ability to attain. And we have to realize that. So we meet them where they are, ensure that their Maslow's basic hierarchy of needs are met, providing them food or uh, a shelter if they need that. Uh, helping them with transportation costs, anything that we can do or working alongside other partner organizations that do a great job of doing that because we don't work in silos and we work together to foster a continuum of, of hope and healing. And so those are the things that we do, but we create that environment that they can come knowing that they will be listened to, they will be accepted, they won't be judged, uh, they'll be safe. It's almost like a, a park that's for nothing but trauma survivors, knowing that not just anyone is going to wander up. It's very private and serene and peaceful. And it's just where we can be still and hear the whisper and be filled in nature and, and get back to the basics of healing. And that's being mindful in the moment so that we can calm the amygdala in the brain that houses those emotional memories where the triggers are. And that we can get to the root cause of why they were a victim of human trafficking to begin with, maybe why they were opened up to victimization in childhood. Uh, we look at generational uh, trauma and how that plays into effect, uh, historical trauma, so many things. But we have to understand that when you meet someone, you may be the only person that they speak to, that you, they interact with before they go home or go to a park or go somewhere already armed with the knowledge in their head, which is our biggest enemy is listening to those negative thoughts that they're going to take their life because they feel like they're not seen. They're invisible. We need to ensure that individuals that we come in contact with feel valued. You, you can save their life literally just by saying, how are you? Wow, you look beautiful today because then you've seen them and you stop that negative thought pattern that uh, the enemy's trying to bring in there to kill, steal and destroy. And they realize, wow, I, I was seen. Maybe I do matter. There is hope. There is healing. There is joy. And, and what does God's word say? By his stripes, we were healed. 
you know, it says that in 1 Peter 2, 24. And by his stripes, we were healed. That's past tense. We've already been healed. We have to walk from victory. We already have. And what does it say in his word in Mark 5, 34? And he said unto her daughter, thy faith have made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. We have to understand that we walk in wholeness and healing and restoration already. But we have to understand that that's ours. We have to take control and walk in that and lay down that little girl or little boy that all those bad things happen to. And that's what we do on our ranch. There's a lot of little boys and girls that individuals have left here after they've attended one of our retreats, realizing that the shame, the guilt, the fear, the regret, the self-loathing, all of that was attached to that little girl or little boy. And we couldn't control what happened to us then. And we can't control it now in this evil world we live in. We can control how we respond to it. And we can be armed with faith. We can be armed with everything it says in the word of God because he protects us as it says in Psalm 91 and he restores us and he redeems us. And I am living proof. He shed my food addiction. I don't need Ambien to get to sleep, washing it down with a bottle of wine. I'm the healthiest I've ever been. And I sleep like a baby. That was the greatest gift ever was peace. Being able to, to quiet my mind that had those many evil thoughts a day and, and the self-loathing and the self-sabotage. And when we realize that we walk from a place of victory, total healing and restoration, we can be whole. We are whole. We already have it. We just have to claim it and refuse to let the perpetrators, the predators win. Refuse to let the abusers win. We will be whole. We will walk in victory. We just have to claim it, own it, and do it. And I prophesize that that will happen. You will be healed. You will be set free. You will walk in total healing and deliverance because this word is true, living, breathing, and it will set the captives free. Hmm, Tammy. Where do I go with that one? Um, well, let me start with a couple of things. Let's go back to, I was working with someone. Um, unfortunately, she died fairly recently, but for 10 years from the age of 14 to 24, she was sex trafficked here in New York. Mm -hmm. And when I met her and got to know her and said, how, how did you after 10 years? Cause she was just a zombie after 10 years. She, under complete control of this trafficker, this pimp. And she didn't even know like money. She was just out of it. And of course, addicted to drugs because that's what they do a lot of the times these traffickers addict. And she said, because a woman looked at her once when she went in for some sort of infection in the middle of the night into a hospital, that's no longer in existence here in New York, but, and sat down and the woman put a blanket around her and just said to her, oh, would you like a cup of tea? And she said, the eyes just met. And she said, she doesn't know what happened, but she snapped out of it. Like, my life is worth more. I have to find help. I have to get out of this. Drug addicted again, alcohol addicted. So again, it's the importance I want to stress of noticing other people. Just giving that little extra something that I know we can do each and every day to that might change somebody's complete day way of thinking, you know, just, I don't know. I'm in the middle of New York city. I still Tammy, they don't answer me most of the time. I live in a big building. I say, good morning. I say, have a good day. Good night, you know, thinking, but then every once in a while I get somebody who smiles at me and says, Oh, you too have a good night. Makes me feel good. Makes them feel good. I think just little things like that. Let me, let me ask you, what right now in 2024, you said you're sleeping very well. I'm happy about that. I'm scared though, Tammy. I'm scared. I don't know if it's because of the internet and we're seeing and, and hearing about more things, but I see an escalation all around us of all of this predation, of this normalization of this horrific behaviors. And so many stories, as, as somebody pointed out to me recently, the trafficking, look first within the home, 
within the family members, because that's where the bulk of this trafficking occurs, you know, familial, as opposed to we always think it's a stranger. And they pointed out to me with all their stats and studies, no, it's starting with somebody, the child or, or the adult knows with all I'm throwing at you. Tell me your thoughts about today. Like what keeps you up at night? I know you said you're, you're sleeping well. So let me rephrase that. Is there anything that worries you right now with all of this going on in society, our culture, our country? No, we have control. We have victory. I don't walk in fear. I walk in hope and joy and healing. And that's what my faith brings. I walk in total liberation and freedom. Yes, we are in an evil fallen world but we are protected and we have peace and joy. And when you have one encounter with the Lord as I've had, and you tap in to that heavenly peace, you will never ever be the same because he will never leave you nor forsake you. And he is the father that you always wanted. He's so good. And it's so, it's so much love. And it's that love that strengthens me. And I draw from that wellspring of living water and I never run dry. I don't walk in fear. I go to the streets. I minister to others. I just go. And there, I don't have fear because there's no fear in perfect love. Mm -hmm. And that's, we are in the world, but not of the world. And we have to be very careful what we let in our ear gate and our eye gate. Because when we consume social media, which is the problem now uh, with the mental health crisis and the opioid pandemic and so yes. many things, the sextortion, but we have all these negative uh, impacts that are hitting our children day after day in our society and us. Well, who's spreading hope? Who's spreading healing? Are the algorithms picking up on that or are they just making money off of? the evil that's in the world. Because what profit the man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Are we gaining off the misery of others? Are we putting that in the news? Where's the hope in the news? Where's the healing? So I just don't listen to it. I, I just choose to, to not let that negative stuff come into me. And I refresh myself daily with devotionals, with his word, with praise and worship music. But I choose joy. I choose love. I choose peace and hope because we have the victory. The evil doesn't win. We are victorious in the end. We know how it ends. We have the Bible. We know. So it's really our choice. But we also need to do unto others as we'd have them do unto us. And as you say, you greet people. You smile. We aren't responsible for an individual's reaction to what we choose to bring to them. But we are responsible for being a bearer of a light in a dark world. We are to show the light and love of Christ to a, a world. We're to show hope and healing and freedom. That's what we're to do because it is possible. I'm living proof and I see it on my land. Individuals get set free of addiction. They get set free of so many things in the chain. And they sleep like a baby and they recognize their worth and who they are. And we just bind all those negative lives spoken over individuals. Let them walk in the truth and the freedom that the word of God brings. Hmm. Tell us about, as you're, as you're saying all of this, and I'm feeling empowered, this is what we have to share with everybody to get them to feel empowered. So I know reflectivespacesministry.com is the website, everybody. Just wait until we're done. All of this, Tammy, will be in the body of the video. But you started, um, what do you call it, a podcast? Podcast recently, Reflective Spaces. Tell us a little bit about that. Because again, I'm always thinking what you know, what I know, what we want to share. We got to get that out into the public. And then they can share it. And it's going to snowball. And we're going to solve any of these negative feelings. Um, so tell us about the podcast, why you started that, how you're doing with that. Just whatever you want to share. Well, let me be clear. I don't do anything of my own power. God directs my steps. I mm -hmm. sold everything to follow him. And he birthed a reflective hour with Tammy Tony Butler. 
It's a podcast and YouTube format, but it's a message of hope and healing. I spend a lot of time ministering to, to broken individuals as I was once broken. And when they leave the ranch, they need a continued set of, of hope and positive reinforcement. They need someone that's listening, but they need to draw from that wellspring of hope. So it's many episodes of hope and it's healing. And it's also looking at my life and, and seeing how I made it through certain things. And it's bringing in the word of God. But it's it's really just providing that spiritual nourishment that's missing because we are more than just a body. We're a mind, body, soul, spirit. I mean, we we have to understand that spiritual health is vital vital, especially in the mental health crisis we're in today. And I have so many individuals that seek uh, the, the episode, they, they love the devotions, and we have had such positive impact in just dealing with the spiritual needs of individuals and recognizing that that is a huge area of opportunity to we, we can uh, plug into, promote, and it single-handedly will decrease the emergency department visits, the mental health visits, and the stress on the economy that comes from the mass production of victims, especially through the social media influence that is there today and where, quite frankly, Congress has refused to act. There's legislation before them now that they can pass. And I pray, I pray, I pray that they do the right thing. Because let me be clear, God wants his children protected. This is the hour. This is the year. This is the time. He is saying to this world, protect my sheep. He wants his children protected. We are to be the bearers of light and truth. And what society destroys its children? What does it say about that society? You have to be very careful. If you want God's hand of protection on you and on this nation, we have to turn back to God because remember, who's the number one constituent? It's God. Let's not forget that in the walls and halls of Congress. Let's remember that. I have solutions. I've seen growth on my ranch. I've seen it working with survivors nationally and internationally. We can solve this crisis. We have to go about it the right way. We have to come together and unify and have hope and healing and truth. We have the victory. The question is, is will we act and will we take it? Or will we let evil win? Not on my watch. Evil doesn't win because we know how it ends. We have victory and we have it through faith. Hmm. Tammy, I want to point something out. Just stop me if you don't want me to say it. So we constantly hear, I don't know if you want to call that with what you do, what I do, what many organizations do and nonprofits and individuals, but it's bad. It's bad. It's bad. Well, we all know a lot of these things around us are bad, right? But you single-handedly traveled to Washington, D.C., marched the halls of Congress. No, it has, it has to be mentioned, Tammy, unless you want me to stop, but I don't really want to stop. I probably wouldn't listen to you if you told me to stop. You marched in there. Little old you just marched in there. You got them to listen. You got, I don't know how many, was it 60 something? I don't know what you did. You went there. I don't know if you were there for 24, 48 hours. You got them to listen when everybody around us was moping, not doing, isn't it horrible? To me, that is very empowering that the power is with us. And you did all that to move child safety, raise awareness about it in my book, Ahead, Ahead. And now you've taken it that step further, teaching us we have the solutions, right? It's, it's, we're not walking in fear. That's right. But I, I think with all this being said, we have to always remember something I try to remember. The community creates the change. Like yes. the warriors, I consider community. Okay, while we fight in Washington for child safety bills, legislation, red tape, which we all know should have been done already. We have had nothing new in 25 years for child safety. Children, children and people are being harmed. We have to keep in mind the changes at the community level, you know, in that home, in that community. And that is where I think all the power is at the community 
level, you know, working together and building out from there. Let me ask you about the ranch because we want to build your ranches, healing ranches. It's not, it's not slapping a band-aid. That's the other thing, Tammy, I don't like. I don't like slapping band-aids on things, which is what a lot of people do. And I'm not judging. Well, maybe I kind of am. But I like, we've got to get to the core of why these things, you know, how to change the trajectory, the thinking, society, not slap the band-aid, intervene and protect. Um, tell us about the ranch, what you need from the public, because... We want to build out. I don't care if it's people buying benches to put on the property or helping with feed for the animals or stocking up paper towels or I don't know. Tell us, tell us what you need because we have to in 2024 do a better job. I have to do a better job with the warriors of supporting you better. So because you are doing you are you are boots on the ground, Tammy. And so that needs to be supported, expanded and helped with. What do you need right now on the ranch? Well, we always um, need prayer. That's that's a huge part of this, recognizing the spiritual piece of it. And then, of course, we need donations. Um, I do go into the streets. I do go and deliver food and hope. And I just, I just drive in the van and I go where God sends me to go. Uh, I listen to the whisper of the Holy Spirit. No, it's not an audible voice, but you just know. And he mm -hmm. sends me just yeah. like he sent me to Congress. Make no mistake. I was there only because of him to spread his word and truth. And you just go around and you we have to understand people are struggling economically. Rent is outrageous. Gas. It affects individuals. And then if they get a raise in their paycheck, usually their health care goes up. So individuals are struggling and, and we have to understand how access to care, marginalization of populations, we have to get to the root cause of human trafficking. We have to cut it off. We have to provide that transportation. And that's what we do. We've provided a transportation for individuals, uh, 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 some that are aging out of a local uh, safe home. And we empower them because if we don't, the traffickers or the exploiters will step in to do that. So we don't judge. We try to help them with transportation. So we need funds coming into the ministry to continue to do that. We need uh, always donations to where we fill our food pantry up and we go out into the streets. We go into uh, labor camps. We go into refugee places that are housing refugees. We go uh, into just the streets of, of normal American uh, uh, born folks that have have suffered, you know, we had a hurricane Ian come through our area. Yes. There are people that are devastated. There's also widows out there. They're living alone. So we, we're called and mandated to help the widow and the orphan as well. There's so many ways people are being exploited through romance scams, you know, financially, the, you know, people are really getting scammed. And so we have a duty and an obligation to go out and arm those vulnerable individuals and, and let them understand what is happening and try to prevent it. So we go out and we do prevention. I go to churches um, and we need the faith based community to rise up and step up in this hour and support yes. organizations like ours who are boots on the ground, spreading love and joy and hope and also identifying individuals that don't self disclose and offering them tools and resources uh, to, to get uh, assistance that they need, whether it's for addiction services, uh, those that are struggling with addiction, which is used to cope. Um, but we just kind of assess their needs and assist or point them into the right direction of another agency, another community partner that's doing that. There's so many wonderful individuals in this space that are truly trying to make a difference. And we need to unify, not duplicate efforts. We don't work in silos. We need to not be territorial. We need to recognize that this is a public health humanitarian crisis. It is a national security threat. And we have to understand that we have to come together as a society to protect America, the United States. It's not about being a Democrat. It's not about being a Republican. It's not about being white or black, gay or straight, rich or poor. We need to protect God's children. That's it. The end. Congress needs to act. 
We need pr to protect them. And we need boots on the ground resources to help these mm -hmm. communities that are struggling. Let people know that you care, not just go to meeting after meeting in a boardroom and take notes that doesn't accomplish anything. Who benefits from that? And let's, let's just be straight here. Every year we introduce legislation into Congress for child safety. Oh, and we go to advocacy days and do all these things. Where's the legislation being passed? Is this another year that Congress is going to fail God's children? Make no mistake, they will be held accountable if they do. Because the number one constituent is God. Let them not forget that. And that's who I went to Congress on behalf of. And that's why doors opened to me because of his power and his will and his protection, because it will be accomplished what he wants to have done. Mm. Well said, Tammy. Tammy, let's finish up. Do you feel like finishing up with a little uh, prayer? Oh, absolutely. I, I, I'd, like, I'd like you to lead us in that um, as we go into, you know, International Women's Day, Women's History Month, Protect the Children. We've got a whole host of, of things we, we work on. And I think this is the way to end this discussion, which, of course, will be continued. Um, I treasure you. But what do you have to say? What do you want to share with us? Mm. Holy Spirit, I just invite you into this time that we have together always. Father, I spread your hope your love, your healing to this world. We are in such a time to where they need you because you hold the answer. I found it. You, you are the answer. And let's tether into you, oh God. I call forth peace and joy. And I also call forth the strength for every member of Congress, for every member in a leadership role, whether you're an institution working with survivors, working with God's children, that we remember you, God, that we remember the mandate to protect the widow and the orphan, oh God, and that we do what's right, oh God. That is my prayer today, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you for that, Tammy. Just beautiful, reflective spacesministry.com is the website. Now we've got the reflective hour with Tammy, Tony Butler. Tammy, you are really one of my favorite warriors. You truly are. I'm sending you a lot of love and thanks for all you do and for your persistence and for your devotion and for your commitment. You're just overall dedication. You make me a better warrior. I can't thank you enough. We will speak again soon. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome.